Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Good evening and welcome to the service of evening prayer live from the chapel at Trinity Episcopal Church in Southport, Connecticut. My name is Rob Lawton and I'm the Associate for Youth and Family Ministries here and wherever you may be joining us from, we are very happy to have you here tonight. If you'd like to follow along, the text of the service can be found in the Book of Common Prayer, beginning on page 117. It can also be found online at bcponline.org. On the menu on the left-hand side, click on the Daily Office. A new menu will appear on the right. Click on Daily Evening Prayer, right to. And the pages are numbered the same way there, so you can follow along with us. Again, thank you for joining us tonight. Begin on page 117. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever living Father in heaven. O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed. Now, as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. The psalms appointed for this evening are Psalms 91 and 92, beginning on page 719. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. He shall say to the Lord, You are my refuge and my stronghold, my God in whom I put my trust. He shall deliver you from the snare of the hunter and from the deadly pestilence. He shall cover you with his pinions, and you shall find refuge under his wings. His faithfulness shall be a shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of any terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, of the plague that stalks in the darkness, nor of the sickness that lays waste at midday. A thousand shall fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Your eyes have only to behold, to see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation. There shall no evil happen to you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the adder. You shall trample the young lion and the serpent under your feet. Because he is bound to me in love, therefore will I deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I am with him in trouble. I will rescue him and bring him to honor. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to tell of your loving kindness early in the morning and of your faithfulness in the night season on the psaltery and on the lyre, and to the melody of the harp. For you have made me glad by your acts, O Lord, and I shout for joy because of the works of your hands. Lord, how great are your works! Your thoughts are very deep. The dullard does not know, nor does the fool understand, that though the wicked grow like weeds, and all the workers of iniquity flourish, they flourish only to be destroyed forever. But you, O Lord, are exalted forevermore. For lo, your enemies, O Lord, lo, your enemies shall perish, and all the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn you have exalted like the horns of wild bulls. I am anointed with fresh oil. My eyes also gloat over my enemies, and my ears rejoice to hear the doom of the wicked who rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree, and shall spread abroad like a cedar of Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be green and succulent, that they may show how upright the Lord is, my rock in whom
whom there is no fault. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from 1 Samuel. Hannah prayed and said, My heart exalts in the Lord, my strength is exalted in my God. My mouth derides my enemies, because I rejoice in my victory. There is no holy one like the Lord, no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Talk no, no more so very proudly. Let not arrogance come from your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The vows of the mighty are broken, but the feeble burn on strength. Those who were full have hired themselves out for bread. But those who were hungry are fat with spoil. The barren has borne seven, but she who has many children is forlorn. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to Sheol and rises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low, he also exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes and inherit a seat of honor. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and on them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his faithful ones, but the wicked shall be cut off in darkness. For not by might does one prevail. The Lord, his adversary, shall be shattered. The Most High will thunder in heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the power of his anointed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our canticle this evening is the Song of Mary on page 119. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. probably heard some distinct similarities between our reading from Samuel, which is the song of Hannah, which she finds out she's about to bear a son, and the Magnificat that we just read, the song of Mary, who is uh, bearing Jesus at this point. And there are probably a lot of arguments that could be made about the similarity between these two things. One is, is a literary one that, uh, that whoever wrote the Gospel of Luke down Knew their, knew their scripture and wanted to tie it back to the Old Testament, and so they, they brought in elements from, from the Song of Hannah. The other argument to be made is that the figure of Mary, whoever she was historically, is someone who knew her scripture. She knew the stories of her people, and so she was able to evoke the imagery that the Song of Hannah raised and use it in her own prayer of thanksgiving to God. The language of that prayer in both cases is of, the, of God coming to the aid and side of those who are downtrodden, those who are meek and lowly, and taking away power from those who have used that power and abused it. As Mary says, God has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy. For both Hannah and Mary, the promise of God is the promise that society will be transformed forever, that those who have known power in this life will know it no longer, and those who have known only suffering in this life will know what it is to be powerful. And it sounds revolutionary, and it is, and it is also the gospel of Jesus Christ. We continue with the Apostles' Creed on page 120. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that as we believe your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended into heaven, so we may also in heart and mind there ascend, and with him continually dwell, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I now invite you in prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. We'll say together the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the Church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us for the service of evening prayer. A reminder that we offer morning and evening prayer every day, live from this chapel at 7.30 a.m. and 5 p.m. But just to let you know, once the end of May has come around, we'll be continuing with just morning prayer. And please join us this Sunday at 10 a.m. for our celebration of the seventh Sunday of Easter. That can be found on our Facebook page, on our Trinity uh, YouTube page, and also on our website, trinitysouthport.org. Wherever you are this evening, I hope that you are having a wonderful night. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and God bless. <laughs>